Keep it simple, stupid. Great advice. Hurts my feelings every time. Wait, can you go Michael back? always says K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Great advice. Hurts my feelings every time. Welcome back, Weight Warriors. You guys know the struggle is real to find food that helps us achieve our fitness goals, but we also look forward to and actually enjoy eating. In my experience, food either tastes really good and is easy to prepare, but it's not so good for you, or at least doesn't get me where I wanna go nutritionally, or it tastes like crap and it is good for you or healthy. The best way to solve any problem is to break it down and try to simplify it as much as you can. And what I have found on my weight loss journey so far is it's easier to stick to my goals if they're simple. Simplicity sounds easy, Easy, but in practicality, it can be a bit challenging. So I'm trying to help you guys with what I've learned so far. And the best way that I've made things simple is to break my meals down into five to 10 meals that I generally like, that I look forward to eating every time. And these are simple meals that actually help me achieve my nutrition goals. I like to have at least five, so then I have some sort of variety, but I probably, at least, I probably have had more than 10 from time to time, but I've noticed when I get past 10, it's a little harder to keep track of things and it just it gets to be more complicated. So what does a simple meal look like? Well, I've got three simple things that really help me to decide if it's gonna be added to my meal plan or not. Number one, is it heavy on protein? We're talking about beef, chicken, seafood, maybe some pork or beans if that's your thing, not particularly for me. But meals that are really heavy in protein will help you feel more satisfied after you're done eating. There's also this thing called the thermic effect of food, which is really just meaning that when the food is digested in your body, that it burns more calories to do so with protein than it does with fats or carbohydrates. And then lastly, protein really helps if you're doing a body recomposition or you're trying to gain muscle along the way. But my favorite really is that protein just makes me feel so full. The second thing I look for when adding a basic food into my meal plan is looking at the processed versus unprocessed foods. I'm trying to stick to whole unprocessed foods and there's really two sides to this coin. The first side is usually the more processed the food, usually the more calorie super packed it is. I've used the example of whole potatoes versus potato chips if you ate the same number of calories in whole potatoes versus potato chips, you're gonna be so full compared to the potato chips, which you could probably kill an entire bag of potato chips and still be fine to have another bag or have another meal later. Where if you eat like, you know, the five potatoes that it would take to make up that bag of potato chips, you're gonna be stuffed. And that's not even getting into all the nutritional information where it's so much better to have the whole potato versus the processed foods. There's a lot to that, but just sticking to the whole foods, you're going to have less calorie dense or less calorie packed foods, which makes it easier if you're trying to maintain a lower calorie intake throughout the day. The other side of that whole foods coin is that when you can try to find whole foods versus the processed foods options, again, it increases the nutrient density that you're gonna get. And it's gonna make you feel more full and you're gonna get more bang for your buck when it comes to calories. So what does this look like practically? Well, try replacing those deli meats with thinly sliced actual turkey or chicken breast. Try to replace that salad dressing with avocados and some olive oil. There are tons of little things that you can find just throughout your life and journey of losing weight of things that you can replace this for that and that is a much better substitute than this was. So that's the second thing that I look at when looking at adding a food to my meal plan. The third thing that I look at is, do I actually like the food and do I actually want to eat that food somewhat regularly for the next six months? If I'm programming in or thinking about foods that I actually love, I'm gonna actually look forward to eating them. Then I'm not gonna be as tempted to eat something else or to order in food or to go out to eat or whatever. I'm gonna be looking forward to the steak that I have that's marinating or the chicken wings that are you know, marinating or whatever. It's a lot of meat that I look forward to eating. But having some self-awareness to know that I'm not gonna eat tofu or beans. So don't buy a bunch of tofu or buy a bunch of beans or buy a bunch of fish if you're not into seafood or buy a bunch of whatever your thing is, if you don't like it, then don't force yourself to eat it. There are plenty of foods that you actually love that you can work into your diet plan. And for the love of all that is good in this world, do not microwave a plain chicken breast and just eat it unseasoned right out of the microwave. Been there and literally done that. It's terrible. I have learned from my ways. I've learned about things like salt and pepper and garlic and you know things that really don't add much when it comes to calories, but actually make it taste so much better. Also, like I talk about marinade, there's tons of marinades and they don't really contribute to calories that much. So that's the third thing. Make sure that you actually are looking forward to the meal, not something that you think you'll like because whatever. The goal is that you look forward to the meals that you have planned. You're looking forward to lunch. You're looking forward to dinner. And then when you're having those meals, you're actually eating enough protein that you're really full that you don't need to snack later. And again, for practicality, I'll tell you guys what I'm eating right now. My top five meals. Number one, I'm eating a lot of steak and broccoli. Second one I'm doing is this chicken spinach salad where I'm just putting a bunch of baby spinach in a bowl, cutting up some chicken thighs, putting some avocado in there, a little bit of olive oil and some almonds and that's it. The third meal is I'm doing garlic shrimp and a little bit of rice, not too many carbs. The 
fourth one is a staple always is chicken wings. I eat a lot of chicken. I eat chicken wings probably twice a week at least. It's just so easy because you just marinate it, throw it in the air fryer, and then eat it. Next meal that I do pretty regularly is like a beef stir fry. I'm just having some cut up beef steaks and I'm putting it in a pan, sauteing with some vegetables and eating it the way it is. And what I do personally is I put all of these meals into chronometer before I eat it so I figure out what quantities of each ingredient I can have. So that way it's so simple by the time I'm actually cooking the food or really I do some meal prep but for the most part I'll just I know if I can have 14 chicken wings I'm just gonna put 14 chicken wings in the air fryer. I know if I can have 300 grams of chicken thigh then I'm just gonna heat that 300 grams of chicken thigh. I try to keep it as simple as possible with as few ingredients as possible that still make it taste really good and hit all of really the nutrition goals that I'm trying to do. By figuring out the meals ahead of time and then figuring out what the nutritional information is using chronometer or some tracking tool ahead of time then I can create the five meals that I can stick to and again looking forward to eat. And a quick tip as far as it goes with the weighing and tracking of food with the actual weighing it's pretty basic you just use a food scale but then when I weigh I don't mix up like cups or ounces or grams I don't mix it like that I do everything in grams and then everything plated or as if you know post cooked that keeps things uniform and easy and that's really the industry standard is all of it in grams all of it after it's cooked so those are my words of wisdom from this week but if you're coming here for my weekly tracking I've got an update I consumed 2661 calories on average this last week I haven't really set a protein goal yet but I'm eating so much protein I'm not worried about it uh, when it comes to steps I did increase that I'm at 7146 steps a day and then with my weight I lost weight again as expected with you know the first two weeks being back I am now down to on average last week you know I add all the days that I that I weighed in last week and then divide by seven I averaged for my weight last week 252.1 pounds so overall I'm down about six pounds overall but last week in particular about three pounds ish pounds so if you're looking for more helpful tips like this feel free to subscribe to the channel or better yet fill out the form and join me on the accountability journey that is the weight warriors we're looking for other like-minded people who are trying to lose weight it's 100 free don't charge for anything we're just looking to help each other win when it comes to weight loss this year so we're not in the same shoes we are in 2025 so if that's something that interests you click the link below and i'll see you on the other side